this is going to be just a little bit of a Wednesday walkabout and talk about we're getting this done because we were just over at my friend John Termans, whose garden you saw not too long ago. So here's a little tease. He did let us go inside his house, which is fabulous. We're going to be posting that this weekend. So I haven't even had time to water yet, but I thought I'm so excited because this weekend, you guys, I think I actually get to work out in the yard all weekend long. That's the first time this has happened, and I don't know, I just don't know how long. So I'm kind of doing a walkthrough today of the things that I want to tackle. And I thought it might be kind of fun as we all do our end of season inventory, end of just about end of growing season inventory on on what some of our favorite things were so that's my question of the day for you this year big or small what were some of your favorite things and i'm going to share mine as we go along i did move i think i told you i moved this topiary table that i got at antique avenue i moved it over here and i really love the fact that these are my topiaries are here at um, at eye level so i can do some clipping on them because I am really being very good about keeping them tightly clipped now as they put on their last growth spurt before they'll have to go in uh, before first frost which for us is sometime end of October I believe so this is kind of fun these kind of are also adapting to an area that's a little bit less strong of sunlight the sunlight isn't quite so intense so they'll be able to segue inside and i've been moving these in and out so i, I that's one of my favorite things that i've got these here just close at hand um, even though it's a mess and needs some tending i'm very pleased with my window box where i just salvaged a bunch of stuff from my front yard and I lost practically everything in this window box to the Arctic blast. So I just dug up some hostas and some fern. You can see this fern, which has all of this crispy stuff on it. This was baking in the front yard because that area suffered storm damage. And this fern was suddenly in way too much sunlight. So I decided to transplant it to the back. So I def definitely will put on my list grooming for this window box. But most of this stuff is settling in really well. And I was able to populate this window box without having to buy anything new. So all of this stuff are things that I was just able to transplant. It looks kind of, kind of rough now. But it will look good this weekend but nevertheless it's pretty full and i was able to populate this window box with stuff that was in the front and not in a happy lo location which definitely this stuff the fern and the hostas will be happier here now um, and also they'll be happier because they aren't so congested my front yard is getting way too crowded and i'm having to do lots of editing in it so that's another one of my favorite things um, i think you guys know that one of my favorite things this year has been my geraniums and now that i pretty much have a grip on the budworms which I've been spraying religiously with BT. You can see that they're starting, the temperatures are starting to cool a little bit. And so they are putting out more buds and more flowers. And by the way, even though later this afternoon, it's gonna get really hot, we're in what I call our, our Santa Fe season or Indian summer or Colorado weather, where it gets really hot during the day, but finally the temperatures cool down beautifully at night and the morning are just mornings are just so lovely and Stuart likes it because the mosquitoes are still out but they're not quite as bad as they were so I will be doing lots of just kind of grooming on my geraniums and continuing to feed them so they will put out a huge end of season flourish this fall because that's when they'll really come back into their own another kind of fun technique that I really liked this year I, I didn't do it last year but if you're having trouble finding saucer containers to use as container plantings, then one thing that I have learned is that the hanging baskets that were in my QVC collection, and I'll put a link above, they make wonderful saucer plantings. I've just cut this one. It was hanging above here on this hook, and I decided to put it down a little bit lower so I could look at it from above instead of from below. And it makes a wonderful saucer planting when you put it on a plant stand. 
preferably one of mine from my QVC collection, but if not, you can just set it on any plant stand. I have really trimmed this back. It's got scented geraniums in it, begonias. I've trimmed it back hard and now I'm feeding it quite a bit right now so that it will flush out and really be able to take advantage of the cooler temperatures. Something that I've been, I've been trying to tackle all season long and and I know you get tired of me talking about how busy I am, so I'm not going to say it again, but I never was able to find a dedicated amount of time to really groom a lot of the boxwood on this on my plant stand. So what I did, I've just been taking care of them and I have moved some of my scented geraniums over here to live along with them and expanded my plant stand and by the way you guys here is a tease an unintentional tease but this may be a really great plant stand may be on my list of QVC items for next year so stay tuned so I like this here they appreciate the little bit uh, greater amount of shade over here and I like the evergreen against the looser foliage of the scented geranium so maybe this weekend I will have time to play over here and it will be very fragrant and fun play because the scented geraniums just smell remarkable. Something kind of unexpected that I just, I guess it was because, maybe it was because of the cold winter, maybe it was because we had a lot of rain through the first part of the growing season, but I have wonderful berries on my Boston Ivy this year, more than I think I've had ever before. And they go up and down this is one of the few times where I am just really letting a vine go crazy. It grows up and down the trunk of my redbud tree, and I really like this. And these berries will turn a beautiful color about the same time that the foliage on the Boston Ivy turns color. And this year, some of it may be a little bit sunburnt, but for the most part, Amazingly, it is free of white fly, which is a problem every year. This year, not so much. So hopefully this will transition from late summer into fall beautifully with great fall color just as we go into my office. Another thing I love this year, I've had more berries on my viburnum. So this is all that glitters or all that glows. I can't remember. It's one of those. And look at those fabulous proven, it's a proven winter plant. Look at those fabulous blueberries. Just wonderful. In fact, yesterday, I, I think I told you that Stuart's daughter gave a recital last night that I went to and I had a bouquet of flowers for her after the recital. And one of the things I had a date with Iris, my favorite florist, put into the bouquet was some of these viburnum berries. And I didn't even think, I came home and I thought, oh, I wonder if mine have turned yet. And they had, I could have used some of my own because they're this wonderful navy blue which is a color that was used in my younger son's wedding this this past summer so that's a nice a nice little echo of the past that i'm happy with more geraniums that are thrilling me one thing i'm paying attention to as soon as it gets cool enough i am going to relocate this sugar shack button bush it's just gotten way too large for this area last year i actually cut it back kind of hard and it seemed to respond very positively to that hard pruning so i'm going to relocate that um, i love this this was a fun thing and i and one of my favorite things also from the impatient gardener stuart let's put a link to her garden tour above erin and that's this montrose white calamint and i just love it it's really really beautiful it keeps on blooming almost non-stop without deadheading i think i'm going to take it out of its pot let it escape the confines of those containers and I'm going to plant that out in the flower beds when it gets a little bit cooler. Uh, definitely I might even try to divide it so I have more of it for next year. I was just tremendously pleased with that. I was once again pleased with my potatim or my pots of thyme. I did, I potted this one with all two different varieties of thyme, a creeping thyme and I think this was just a traditional English thyme. 
I love the way it fills the pot and of course the moth, mossy patina of this glazed pot. And even on the one where I lost some of the thyme in the interior, I was able to plant its mate with a box, or excuse me, a rosemary topiary, and it just has a little skirt of thyme around the end that is also very happy, and it is crawling over my beloved gravel. Um, I'm so surprised and very happy this year that I was able to remove this tithonia and transplant it into this tub. That was just a happy surprise to me. I didn't expect it. And look, Stuart, let's be very... Yeah, the monarchs, oh my gosh, the monarchs. It also almost makes Stuart cuss. He caught himself, he caught himself just in a moment. But yeah, I was going to the bee. Yeah, you were going to the bee and I was pointing to the monarch, which is, shh, shh, shh. Look, where'd it go? It's over there. It's over there. Anyhow, there's all, it's, it's just, it's, it's distracted by all the things. Carrie, Carrie needs to, our bug whisperer needs to tell us exactly what that is. Look at the color of that. That's fabulous. When Julia played soccer when she was little, they would say they would stop and like let them stop and play with butterflies. And now we're doing the same thing. I know, it, which just shows that we've got lots of kids. Gardeners have lots of kid in them. So, so there's a lot of things in my garden that the monarchs are loving this year. And I've had a good number of them and they'll continue to be more. And I do love this. Granted, this tithonia got a little bit too big and thuggish, but boy, I so love that color orange, and I love the texture of its velvety pebble, pebbles, uh, petals, so I think I need to use that someplace else. So there you go, guys. Uh, my last favorite thing was the beautiful monarch butterflies. Just a little Wednesday walkabout and talk about of some of my favorite things from this growing season. See you this weekend. Well, if you have held on this long, here is your fashion epilogue for today. My coffee cup <laughs> is compliments of the Goodwill store, and thankfully, Stuart just made me a wonderful cup of coffee. Thank you, Stuart. French roast is my favorite. Um, my sunglasses are, I think they were Forever 21. They've got kind of a Yoko Ono, John Lennon vibe, which is appropriate since I have on a Beatles t-shirt. And this Beatles t-shirt is one of my favorites. And this came from, I think this came from Goodwill. It either came from Goodwill or Target. I can't remember. Um, my belt came from Nordstrom Rack. My britches, I honestly, I can't remember. I may have remembered in a previous video when I've worn them and I don't remember now. <laughs> uh, so they came from someplace. They're just black jeans and I like them folded up. My shoes came from Target. I really like these sandals. They have kind of an, uh, a textured African vibe that I like. And let's see, my earrings are made well from Nordstrom Rack. And they kind of remind me of a peace sign, even though they're not really a peace sign. And then my ensemble of bracelets. Oh boy, Stuart, did you just get that whiff of, of uh, fish fertilizer? <laughs> That I just used. Um, my bracelets are, this came from an old shop on Western called the French Cowgirl that's not there anymore, as did this bracelet, I believe. This was actually a bracelet made out of recycled stuff from Save the Ocean or For the Ocean. It was a fundraiser to clean up debris out of the oceans. This little bracelet came from my mother-in-law. Can't remember where I got this one. And this one, you guys, I am going to do some Instagram material on this a little bit later. This is a, a Janet Mavic piece from Orchard Jewelry, which I really like. Sorry, I'm not doing, showing, demonstrating very well. It's got a sweet little bird on it. I've got a pear necklace from them. All of her jewelry is nature inspired. I think I might have a, have a coupon code too. So there you go. There is my assemblage of my bracelets today and my outfit du jour.